Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and we're going to be continuing the level editor series. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on the ability to create instances on the fly within our game. Now, if you haven't already watched the previous video, you can find them in the description below, along with the source code to get started. In that previous video, we initialized our user interface and created a simple button. We're going to be expanding on this concept quite a bit here. First, let's open up the object debug, and we're also going to open up the create, begin step, step, and the draw events. Now let's maximize the window, and let's start off with the create event. I've left some variables pre-populated here for us to use. We're going to be using these to help us create the instances within our game. First, you can see we have a selectable objects variable. This is an array that we're going to be using to determine which objects we want to be able to select within the game. Let's start by adding the first object to this array. This object's already been created, but don't worry, we're going to create another one from scratch. Let's go ahead and add the object box into the array. Now let's switch over to the step event and where we have our test window, let's change a few of these things. The first thing I want to do is rename this to be toolbox. And I also want control over the position of this window because we might have multiple windows and it's never nice when they overlap. So right above this function, let's set the window position by using a UI.windowPosition. We're going to pass in the parameters 32 by 32 for the X and Y location. Coming down to our test button, let's change it to say create object box. Now, when we click on that button, instead of showing a message, we want to change a variable named selectable index. This is going to match the array position. Now we could write a function to return the position within the array based on the object that we're creating. But for now, to keep things simple, we know that the object box is going to be the first object within the array. So let's just set this variable to be zero. Now let's head on over to the draw event. We're going to need to draw the selected item. Right now, we're only going to be drawing anything if the global debug is turned on. We also want to make sure that our selectable index is not negative one. As a final precaution, we also want to ensure that the object that we're going to be drawing does indeed have a sprite. We can check this by grabbing the sprite that is attached to the object from our array. Let's actually store this in a local variable because we're going to be using it again. We'll say sprite equals object get sprite. We'll pass in our array and then the index will be our selectable index. Now we can check to see if the sprite is not equal to no one. And if this is true, this means that our object does indeed have a sprite. So let's go ahead and draw it. We'll be using the draw sprite command by passing in the sprite variable, the sub image of zero, and the mouse x and y positions. On the opposite side, if we don't have a sprite, let's actually just draw a circle based on our mouse positions. Now, if we run our game, let's ensure everything is working. If we hit F1, we can see we now have our toolbox in front of us. If we click the button, you can see that the box is now following my mouse around. We need to make sure that we are able to place this in a room. So let's close the game and switch over to the step event. Inside the step event, we're going to create a new if statement at the bottom of the debug check. We want to listen for any of the right mouse clicks. We can do this by using a mouse check button pressed. We also need to make sure that the selectable index does not equal negative one. Once we have done these checks, we can easily use the instance create depth at the mouse X and Y positions. And I'll just use the current depth of my object and I'll pass in our selectable objects array. And then finally the selectable index. After we create the instance, I'm going to change my selectable index to negative one so that I have to click the button again in order to make a new one. Now, one final thing we need to do before we actually run this is take the UI library update event. And we're going to cut this and place it in the begin step event so that it runs first. Now, if we run our game and test it out, we can create the boxes. And if we right click on the box, it will change colors. We can then also drag it around into a different position. You might also notice that there's a window that will pop up and it's using the same method as before with the UI. Let's actually close this and take a quick look at the object box by opening up all of the events. In the create event, there isn't really anything new here. 
We're using the UI library and we have a variable to tell us whether or not we are in debug mode. That's basically saying if we're selected. In the step event, we're checking to see if we are debugging. And if we have pressed the right mouse button, we then want to check the range to see if we can select ourselves. This will produce a few misclicks, but for this video is perfectly fine. Finally, if we're able to select ourselves, we'll display a window that will allow us to remove the box and show a little bit of information about it. Here, I should also restrict the window that is created. So let's use the UI.WindowPosition again, and let's set the window position. This time, let's pass in 256 and 32. Remember, these coordinates are on the user interface and not actually the game. So with that out of the way, let's create one more object before we finish off here. Let's create a new sprite and let's name it SPR underscore barrel. I'm going to import the image that I found using opengameart.org. And I want to also resize it to be 32 by 32. Now with the sprite done, let's create a new object and let's name that object object barrel. We're going to drag our sprite in so it gets assigned. The first thing I want to do is add this barrel into the selectable objects array. Again, this will be found in the object debug asset. Finally, if you want collisions to happen, let's also open up the object game in it. We're going to add that particular object into the collision array. Now all that's left is to go back to the step event of the object debug. and We're going to copy and paste the code that we had for the box button. Let's start off by renaming object box to object barrel. Now we also need to set the correct selectable index, which is going to be one, and that will actually be the second element within the array. Now, before we run our game, let's actually make sure that we can move the object around using our mouse button. Inside the object barrel, we're going to add a create event, a step event, and the draw event. In the create event, I'm not going to be using the UI, but you can do this if you want. I'll be creating a debug selected variable and setting it to false. In the step event, let's check to see if we're using our global debug variable and it's set to true. If we've also pressed the right mouse button, now we can check to see if we are within 16 pixels. And if our mouse is within 16 pixels, let's actually set the debug selected to true now. Now, since we're setting this variable to true, we also need to make sure that we reset it to false. We'll check our debug selected. And if it equals true, then we need to check to see if we're pressing down on the right mouse button. If those two statements return true, we'll set the X and Y position according to our mouse positions. Finally, in the draw event, if we are selected, let's draw the sprite using the draw sprite extended command. We'll pass in the sprite index, the image index, the X position, Y position, image X scale, image Y scale, but for the color, we'll use the color of line, and for the alpha, we'll use the image alpha. If we are not selected, then we're just going to use draw self. Now let's run our game and check things out. If we hit the F1 button, we should have two buttons. We can place the object box within the room, and if we select it, we can also move it around. If we right click near the barrel, we can move it around just like we did with the box. In addition, we can move our character and we will collide with both the box and the barrel automatically. And I will say that that code is done using the new GameMaker functions for collision, which is accept arrays. And that's actually going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. There's a lot of little shortcuts that can be taken to make this approach more streamlined, but I feel like this is a good starting point. And with that, thank you for watching the video. Check out the description to links to the previous videos, downloads, and more. And if you're looking for the full source code, text tutorials, and access to more, check out my Patreon site. Speaking about Patreon, I want to thank all of my supporters for helping me make these videos. A shout out to the following Patreon readers in no particular order. Pistol, Matthew, Victor, Thomas, Midnight, Game Maker Community, Mika, and Sudu. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Patreon site, or leave a thumbs up, or even hit subscribe. Once again, thank you very much.